Good morning. It is Saturday and I am setting out to run a few errands. So thought I would have a bit of a chat. Um, this one is probably going to target dungeon masters out there, storytellers, etc. Rather than, I don't want to say normal, but uh, rather than players. Um, and basically, this is a cycle that seems to come up a lot um, in games, where, especially when you run games like I do, and I usually run very high power games, um, sometimes things tend to run away. Sometimes things get blown out of scale, and it starts to influence the way people are enjoying the game. Now, sometimes that's through my own actions, putting in an item or uh, a situation that accelerates the power level too quickly, changes the curve. Other times, it happens through player actions, uh, either they come up with something that's completely ingenious and breaks the system, and you're left with either shutting them down and them being pissed off about it, or allowing it to happen, and then having to realign the system to cope. Uh, other times, it comes from outside forces. Uh, and the time that we're looking at right now is very much more outside forces. Uh, now, anyone who has been following the Monday game knows that things have gone batshit crazy. Um, and it all started because of a Tuesday game that got out of hand. And I just thought it would be nice to talk through the logic of what has happened and how it's happened and then maybe talk about some ways to fix it. Uh, I'm hoping that DMs, storytellers, will find this useful. Uh, I'm not gonna get into too much regarding actual system mechanics, so it should be beneficial whatever game you're playing um, without too much alteration. <sighs> Pardon me. So, bit of background. Tuesday nights, I was a player in a mage game being run by one of my players in the Monday game. Uh, things in that game got a bit crazy. Um, the mages built up an awful lot of paradox and then botched badly as a group and um, imploded basically it, it imploded the game uh, it was so significant a botch though that the DM wanted to do something a bit crazy with it and because we do a lot of shared world stuff between us anyway. Um, in fact, the new game that he's replaced the mage game with is set in the Spelljammer worlds that I have been running in and follows on a number of years later. Um, so we use a lot of shared world continuities anyway. And basically, because of the nature of the bot, because of the nature of what happened, uh, these three mages basically ended up scattering their consciousness across mankind. And we started talking about kind of the implications of these mage consciousness on kind of the subliminal side of the human psyche. And kind of what we came up with was that normal, unawakened 
sleepers hit with just the barest glimpse of a mage's mind, how would it manifest itself? What would that do to sleepers? Well, likely it would manifest itself through dreams. That was our logic of it. Three mages scatter their consciousness across the world. It touches sleepers. It's going to manifest itself as a dream. It's not potent enough to be a memory. It's not precise enough to be a trigger for awakening. It's going to manifest itself in their subconscious dreams. Now, what that means is that in that moment of those three mages exploding themselves across the world, you had millions of people who all at once began to generate a spark, more dream, more glamour. Of course, the group that's going to feed on this the most is the changeling. And whenever I started thinking about it, started thinking about the implications of this, um, the moon landing has been given as the last time that the doors to Arcadia opened. And that was just people watching something on TV. And that wasn't even everyone watching. That was just a few million people watching. There's a lot more people than that now. And this doesn't depend on them watching something on TV. It's hitting them directly. And it's going into their subconscious. So I thought, okay, well, that means that the effect of this is going to be more significant than what happened when the moon landing occurred. That generates the scale of what we're talking about here. It's more significant to the changelings than the moon landing. Okay, well the moon landing threw open the doors to Arcadia and a bunch of fey came rushing in, the second coming. Um, this is what triggered off the, the fey, uh, or sorry, the changeling, the, the noble commoner wars and uh, all of that stuff that happened in Changeling. So, I mean, that was a huge significance, and this has to be bigger than that. Okay, so we thought through it, <coughs> and the resulting decision there was that what this moment of, of implanted dream, of implanted possibility would do is it would tear down the mists for a short while, about a day. Well, what that means is for one, humans and everyone else are going to be able to see changelings' fey manes. It means that creatures from the dreaming, for once, will not be held back from entering the, the, the autumn world because all of a sudden the autumn world is less banal than it was before. It's more survivable for them. It's less sealed off. It's, in a lot of ways, rolled back hundreds of years to the way things used to be when things like dragons and, and mythological creatures, as we call them now, used to get sighted because they could cross over. So, we decide that's what's going to happen. Now, we also then add in the fact that the changelings in our game are at Disney World. They're at Disney World, which is a place where the barriers are, to be honest, fairly thin to begin with. So, they're at one of the epicenters of the madness, of everything that goes on with this. Now, you start rolling through, start thinking about it, um, how does this progress? Well, 
people start seeing things. A lot of people think that it's hallucinations, it's uh, people going crazy, mental hospitals get overrun, uh, people panic, people start rioting in the streets, people start losing it. Uh, not only that, but they're seeing monsters everywhere they turn. There are changelings everywhere. Um, all of a sudden, things start to spiral downhill very quickly. And then the group do things like flying around with dragon wings and turning someone into a dragon. Bear in mind, that was a mistake. They didn't actually mean to do that. Uh, they unleash the dreaming three or four times. Now, unleashing is an intense way to pull the dreaming into reality, even through the mists. So I don't think they really consider the effect of pulling the dreaming when the mists was not there. They were just drawing more and more and more of that dreaming glamour into the real world. They, they were taking a leaking faucet and turning it onto Max. Um, it also didn't help things that, unknown to the players, and this is all working into this chain reaction, before this had happened, they had released a chimerical creature from confinement. Now, what they didn't know, and still in character don't know, is that the reason the Changelings had agreed to imprison that character, that, chim that Chimera, was because there had been a number of incidents already where he had nearly tipped things too far. He had a unmatched talent for pulling glamour from people, for inspiring people to dream. And there had been a couple times that he had very nearly revealed all of it to the mortals, to the autumn people. And as part of a deal to keep the peace with all of the other groups, the changelings reluctantly agreed to imprison figment of imagination. So even before this trigger from the Tuesday game hit, we had already been going down a path where they were going to be pushing the line, um, where there was a possibility of a lot of this being revealed. And then on top of that, the Tuesday game hit. And then on top of that, um, the unleashings hit. And, and on top of that, everything else hit. And it snowballed and snowballed and snowballed to the point that now, just through the natural logical progression of if this happened, what would respond, what would happen? If this happened, what would come next? Without really planning it, just kind of reacting to the inputs, we've ended up with millions possibly dead, missing, insane. Um, things have really spiraled beyond a reasonable point. And it's gotten to the point that I can look at it as someone who's played Changelings for years and say this is not a normal Changeling game. This is not how Changeling normally goes. 
the players, who have, for the most part, never played Changeling, are looking at it and going, if this is how this game goes, I'm not sure it's a game for me. It's not really what I'm what I'm into. Um, and I'm trying to say, no, this is not normally how it goes. This is not uh, a normal Changeling game. So, that kind of describes the situation. 